Hey, Dave. Hey, Pierre. What are we learning about today? Today, we're going to learn about how to use SQL to manipulate CSV files in Python. Awesome. So we're going to look at our integration with DuckDB, which allows to do some fancy stuff with SQL. So the first things you can do in Notable, of course, as you might know, is uploading uh, local files into Notable in the cloud. So here I've uploaded a, a bunch of files. I have a data.csv, I have a penis data 215 CSV, and, and some notebooks. But let's look at this notebook querying with SQL in Notable. So the first things you can do that's very valuable and saves you a lot of time, it's query directly CSV file with SQL. So here I'm just doing a select stuff from happiness data 215 CSV. I don't have to create an temporary table. I don't have to spin up a Postgres database locally. All of that, forget about it. You just pick the SQL cell. Um, you just make sure you're on the CSV file plus data frame data sources, which you know focus on your local DB. If ever you have a data connector, you could query Redshift, BigQuery, Snowflake, but we'll see that another day. I'm going to hit run. And boom, I get access to the results and my data frame coming out of that CSV. All I did here is say, retrieve the CSV, please. Select star from that CSV. What's fantastic is in Notable, again, in another video, you will see how you can leverage this interactive grid to um, interact with that data without code, but that's not the topic of today. What's fantastic after that is now that CSV and that output, that result actually has a name. His name is SQL underscore output. You can see on the left sidebar here, we have a viable explorer that gives you the variable that are available in memory in your Python kernel. You can see the SQL output, which is the representation of this result and the different columns, columns being the fields in that CSV file. Now, what's fantastic about that is this output is actually a data frame in Python. So I can actually retrieve the data frame using Python. And that's how you start mix, doing a mix and match between SQL and Python. What's even better about it is I can now directly also using SQL against data frame. So I just showed you how to use SQL against a CSV, against the file that's in your project. But now imagine you work with Python and you iterate on it and you want to go back to SQL. You can take this data frame, SQL output, and I can query directly with SQL. So here I'm doing a select uh, region and average family. So I'm looking at this data frame. I'm going to retrieve region as a column. I'm going to compute the average score of the family ranking, family score here on the happiness rank data. Um, and I'm going to name it average FD. Uh, my table is the data frame that's in memory. I'm going to need to do group by, and I'm going to order by the, the average score. And that's really powerful because like imagine data analysts that have maybe a strong background in SQL, but may not know Python or pandas that well to do kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, data manipulation or kind of filters based on that pandas data frame. Now you can just do SQL against that to filter down the data. In this case, to you know, look at the average based on the region here. Yeah, I mean, it's very common to have people even, you know, uh, data practitioners and expert and data scientists to go back and forth between SQL and Python. Uh, you might use SQL for the aggregation or collect data from different data sources, from different sources, and then use Python to do the wrangling, and then even use SQL again to do some ETL workflows, let's say, right back to a data warehouse or whatsoever. So uh, being having that mix and match between SQL and Python is, is very valuable. So now that I have my uh, SQL statement against my data frame, uh, you actually see the value of interacting with data frame and CSV file using SQL. As a bonus, before we close the tutorial for today, you can actually additionally interact with Python within your, your SQL statement. So what I can do is create a SQL, create a Python cell, uh, define the value equal one. So what I'm gonna do is set up a, a variable here in my IPy kernel and say value equal one. I can also use that in a SQL statement. So here I'm doing a select region average FD. So again, I'm using the nice feature of being able to name the output of a SQL as a variable in Python. So now I'm using SQL underscore query, which is this query. So I'm going to create directly this new table. And I'm going to I'm going to do the same. Just select the same thing. Select the region. Select me. Give me the two columns that are there. But I'm adding a where statement. The where enabling me to put a condition on the results and say average FD. Um, 
above or equal the value that I define here with Python. So I'm going to run this. And you're going to see that it's only retrieving the rows uh, that have that value above 1. So I have 1, 2, 3, I have 6 results, where here I had 10 results. Perfect. So yeah, thank you very much.